Hello, my name is Peter Coles and I'm a Professor of Theoretical Physics at Maynooth University in Ireland. Uh, during the course of my job, I have to teach uh, various courses in physics and uh, mathematics uh, as applied or applicable to physics. And uh, with the exam season coming up, both uh, for schools and colleges and indeed for advanced uh, postgraduate courses, I thought it would be useful to record a little video showing a few tips about uh, how to solve the kind of physics problems that you find at high school, uh, at undergraduate level, uh, and indeed at, at more advanced level. Um, and this, these tips will go for whether it's an examination question, whether it's a coursework question, uh, or whether it's just a problem you're doing for fun, which frankly is the best way to do physics. So in the following, I'm just gonna go through a few steps that hopefully you'll find useful that will prepare for whatever physics problems you have in front of you in the future. So this is a picture of the great American physicist, Richard Feynman. Now, Richard Feynman was not only a brilliant scientist, uh, best known for his work on quantum field theory and specifically quantum electrodynamics, but he was also a superb teacher and his lectures to undergraduate students at Caltech on uh, all kinds of branches of physics are legendary. And in fact, the notes from those lectures were made into a series of books uh, which you can actually download for free now from the internet. Um, but I actually used those quite a lot when I was an undergraduate student studying physics many years ago. So I recommend that you have a look at them. Now, Richard Feynman, um, perhaps slightly facetiously, uh, passed on three tips for how to solve physics problems for use by undergraduates. Tip number one is to write down the problem. Tip number two is to think very hard. And tip number three is to write down the solution. Well, Richard Feynman may have been a brilliant physicist, in fact, he undoubtedly was, but uh, he wasn't known for his modesty, let's put it that way. I'm not really sure those three things were meant uh, to be taken seriously, but in any case, they're not, um, uh, perhaps as useful uh, uh, tips for solving physics problems as uh, mere mortals like us uh, would require. So what I, what I want to do is to share a few of my own tips, which have come through you know, a career in working in physics departments uh, here around uh, the UK and here in Ireland. And hopefully they'll give you some uh, insights onto how to go about tackling physics problems. And I'll just do them one by one. So the first piece of advice is read the question. I remember uh, my physics teacher at school many years ago used to have one of those rubber stamps with read the question written on it at the, on the bottom and he used to stamp homework, read the question. I often felt like he, um, he really ought to have put an expletive in read the question because um, it made him quite angry when people didn't read the question carefully. There are two reasons for reading the question. Obviously, you should read the question if you're going to answer it, but two things, basically. One is uh, to make sure that you answer the question that it's asked and not some other one, which may be easier. Dear Mr. Examiner, I didn't like your question, but here's what another one that I've answered. Doesn't go down very well in an exam. And the other thing is actually to, uh, a little bit more subtle, which is to go through the question and understand exactly what it is that's included in the question. So sometimes there are um, words in the question which uh, may be not so obvious uh, that they are physically significant. So for example, if a, if, a, if a body is described as light, then that's really significant. It means that you can ignore the mass of that body compared with other ones, uh, for example. And there are often little clues like that in the question which if you just quickly read it, you, you will miss. So number one, read the question. Number two is translate the information that's given into the question into a mathematical form 
one that you can actually use in calculation. So that means, largely it means going through the things that are given in words, um, as the speed of a particle or the mass and so on, and if necessary, assigning symbols, variable names to those uh, quantities. So you, first of all, you have to start by saying the mass of the particle is m, the distance is x, the velocity is v. That makes sure that those symbols actually have a particular meaning, which is going to carry on throughout the question. Now, the, the reason that's important is you may half remember formulae with a with a v in them, um, but it. That V that you remember by just remembering a formula might not be the same V which is in the question. Okay, so you have to be clear what it is that you're actually defining your things to be. And they may not necessarily be things that you remember from notes and their exam conditions. Number three is to make sure you know what you're doing, what you're trying to do, where you want to go from the information that's given in the question. So think about the end point. If it's a formula you have to derive, figure out uh, how the symbols in that formula relate to the information that you've given. By looking at the end point, you can often figure out um, what kind of manipulation you do, or what, what kind of maybe physical laws you have to bring in to relate things that are given to the question to things that appear in the answer. So. You, it's very difficult to set out on a journey unless you have some idea of where you're going to end up. So take a moment to think about where you're going, and then that makes it easier to see how to take the first steps on that journey. Number four is to draw a diagram, or diagrams if, if it's relevant to draw more than one. Now, why this is important, there may be a, a diagram given in the question, but it's really important, I think, in order uh, to understand what's going on, to copy the diagram or draw your own diagram if one isn't provided. Even if it's a simple thing like showing the direction of all the forces on the particle or something like that. The reason I think this is important is that the act of drawing something with your own hands activates the part of your brain that deals with geometrical reasoning and the relationships of objects to other objects. And that can be a very important part of the physical insight required to solve a physical problem. Now, your diagram doesn't have to be very good. You don't have to be Leonardo da Vinci. Even if it's a scribbly mess, it's your diagram and what appears on that page has gone through your brain and shows some kind of your own version of understanding how things are related to each other spatially in, in the question that you have to solve. So it, that's actually really important in my view. My fifth tip is to explain your reasoning as you go there. So make a note of what you're doing as you go through a calculation. Um, any calculation in a physics uh, problem will generally involve several steps. And sometimes you don't get all the way to the end. I mean, that's, it's better if you do, but sometimes you just can't figure out how to get to the final point on the journey. The point about explaining what you're trying to do in each step is to convince the examiner uh, that you at least have some idea what you're trying to do. So if you say, right, I need to find the maximum of this function, then, um, and, and that's the right thing to do, but you don't happen to do it correctly, then it's not the end of the world. You will get some credit for actually realizing what you're supposed to do, even if you didn't manage to do it fully. Now, you might say that's gonna slow you down in an exam question and so on, but if you don't do that, the chance, uh, the risk you take is that uh, you will get, you will do a question, uh, come to grief at some point, not finish it, but what you've left is basically just a jumble of calculations and the, without much evidence that you knew where you were trying to go. So if you want to get some partial credit for a question which you haven't completed, then it's very important uh, to at least make an indication of what you're trying to do as you go along. Tip number six out of eight is to check your working and your answer. So you might do a calculation uh, and get to what you think is the right answer, 
it's really it's very easy on especially under exam pressure to slip the odd minus sign or a factor of two somewhere so don't just stop when you've got to the end check over it as best you can to make sure that you haven't made any silly mistakes that will cost you marks so check your working now the other thing that comes under this is and i'm going to let you into a bit of a secret here lots of physics um, questions that you come up in ex examinations and so on, so on include a bit where you have a formula which you might have proved or is just given to you and you have to evaluate what that formula means for a particular situation so when the mass is 10 kilograms the velocity is 10 meters per second etc etc and all that involves doing is putting numbers in the formula and working out the answer I'll tell you now that based on my experience of marking examinations that uh, under exam con conditions about half the students will not do that correctly first time. So they lose marks that are there for the taking by just being sloppy or being under pressure typing, uh, uh, pressing the buttons on the calculator. The way to not slip up like that is to do the calculation on your calculator more than once. Make sure you get the answer at least twice, If you the same answer twice. If you don't get it twice, go back and see where you press the wrong button and so on. Finally, in this one, I would say, think about the answer and does it make physical sense? I tell you, many years ago, I was teaching particle physics and I had an, an exam question, quite a long question, and then at the end, the students had to work out what the mass of a proton was is the mass of the proton is about 1.6 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms it's not very massive um but in this one of the uh students in this exam basically uh got an answer to that question of 10 to the 94 kilograms now you don't need to know much about physics to realize that that's the wrong answer now actually i did have another um piece after that calculation in the exam which said comment on your answer and this student at least realized that that was wrong and actually wrote bloody hell uh, which I thought was a reasonable comment on that answer so I gave him a mark of course it's better to get the answer right but you will get some credit if you display some understanding of physical uh, scales and things which are involved so some kind of physical insight uh, is worth saying so just think about the answer and see if it's physically realistic. Tip number seven involves units. Now the point about this is that physics or applied mathematics is not pure mathematics. It's not just algebra or geometry. The quantities that you calculate and which you're given at the start are physical quantities and they have units attached uh, so if it's a length it'll be in meters or whatever mass will be in kilograms speeds will be in meters per second or whatever and and it's very important therefore that when you give your answer that you give it first of all with the unit don't leave the units off as many students do and secondly make sure it's the right unit so if it's a mass it will not be measured in meters if it's a length it will not be measured in kilograms I am not a particularly strict marker of exam papers, I don't think, I'm a bit of a softy really, but I'm quite strict on units. If you don't give the units, that's not the answer to a physics problem. So make sure you get, the, think about the units, make sure you've got the units and make sure that they're the right unit. Right, my final tip is, uh, concerns the bit when you've got to the end of a problem and you think you've finished it, don't just stop if you get there. Make sure that you say that you've proved the result, that you are aware that you've got at the answer that you're supposed to do. Say the mass of the proton is whatever. Don't just leave it hanging there. Very often when I'm marking exams or coursework questions, I see a student has actually done quite a lot of calculations, almost there, but you're not quite convinced that they've actually um, realize that they've got to the end of the problem so say therefore the answer you can actually finish with a with a flourish you could say uh qed 
which uh, jokingly is quite easily done. Actually, it's not quantum electrodynamics either. It actually means um, uh, from the Latin quad erat demonstrandum, which was to be proved. You don't have to write that, but it's kind of a nice, neat way of finishing. Say, like, look, I've done it. Very often when I'm marking uh, exams, I, you see a student has done all this work and uh, it's like a football team doing some very good movement and passing and so on and very fancy play, which is all very impressive. But at the end of the day, they don't put the ball in the back of the net. And that's what actually counts. So make sure you do that at the end of the question. Say that you've done it. So there you are. Those are, those are my uh, eight pieces of advice for solving physics problems. Um, there is one other uh, piece of advice, which I didn't include in those eight, and it's probably the most important of all, which is that if you are in an exam situation and you get a bit stuck, the most important piece of advice is don't panic, right? If you really get stuck, don't just sit there fretting over one piece of one question or one question. Move on to another one and try that. Maybe sometimes going and doing a different problem will mean that you can go back to the original one with a slightly different way of looking at it. So nobody ever gets anywhere by panicking. So just try to stay calm. If you can't do something, just move on to the next question. Remember also that exam questions in generally is, there's the amount of marks available for each part of the question um, are, 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 are displayed on the exam paper. And uh, one of the things about that is that you shouldn't really fret too much if you can't do a bit that's worth four marks. It's better to go on and do one of the bigger pieces on another question um, to, uh, to save yourself getting back bogged down. Anyway, I hope you find that useful. Um, what I will say to finish with is that if you have got exams or some other assessments coming up in physics or applied maths or indeed anything else, um, let me wish you the very best of luck and I hope you fulfill your potential. <laughs>